Hello everybody and welcome to this new installment of Eloy and Goran talking about effects stuff. Um, yeah. uh, today we're gonna look at um, how you can visualize data in your Trigi package. Um, I'm gonna talk about how you can do that in Houdini and who, Eloy told me that there is um, ways to do the same thing in Max, so I'm really curious to see that. Yeah, we will check this in TP and uh, some new tools we have on Effective TDs all right. to expand the basic stuff we have in Max. Nice, I'm really curious to see about that. Alright, so uh, in Houdini, since everything is geometry, it doesn't matter in which context you are, um, well, as long as you're in geometry context, but you can be in a popnet or a dotnet or sop, um, you can display um, attribute values. So on here, we have a uh, kind of a viewport display kind of settings, and basically we can show points, we can show normals, we don't have any normals right now on this, but if I do, if I create a box, you can see it displays the normals for each vertex. Um, in, <coughs> in Houdini, you have like, whatever polygons come together, you have a point, but then also vertices for each polygon. So that's why we have um, the normals showing in the actual directions of the polygons. But if I put a normal here um, and I set this to points, we can see it averages those three. Amazing. Um, yeah, or if I promote the attribute from vertices uh, to points, uh, it does the same thing. The only thing is that a box actually it doesn't have, it only has the position. It doesn't have normals. It, the viewport just does that by default. So I need to put a normal here. Now it's at the vertices. So, and then if I promote it to points, we can see it averages it. Same deal, just, you know, to give you a little overview. Um, we can show velocities um, by default. So, that works. We can also show point numbers, um, primitive normals, so, Prim yeah, primitive normals and primitive numbers and then some other stuff. That you don't know? Uh, <laughs> yes, um, the display primitive <laughs> hull, whatever that is, yeah. um, and display vertex markers. Um, mm. Yeah, yes. let's not get into it. But the cool thing is you can also show axis like a uh, uh, like this little gizmo here. The mm -hmm. So if we add a orient to our particles, actually we don't because we have a spin. So we already have an orient uh, on our particles. And no, we don't have a spin. Let's add a spin. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, so we can see the local um, mm -hmm. alignment of each particle. That's really cool. Um, yeah, so this is what we can do in viewport by default. Um, we can also do custom data. And as we see here, we also have a spreadsheet. So in the spreadsheet, if we select the geometry part of the popnet, um, it lists us all the particles with all its attributes. So, and if we dive out uh, of, of the uh, popnet and we select a node underneath, <coughs> we directly get the geometry because SOP is a geometry um, environment. And again, we have all our attributes. Um, we can add as many attributes as we want and we can delete them, except P, we cannot delete. And then each geometry, uh, because you're in Houdini, you're dealing with, uh, always with points, uh, vertices, primitives and detail, 
um, which is a special attribute, um, you can switch between them and each of them can hold any arbitrary amount of attributes. And Houdini also allows for very kind of various kind of types of um, attributes like strings, arrays, uh, point four vectors like uh, quaternions, um, matrices like four by four matrices, or whatever, whatever you want. So to say. Wow. Um, primitive the same, and then you have the detail attribute as well, which is basically one attribute or one value per stream. So um, whatever, how many streams you have, they will all have one, and then when you merge them, they will those attributes will merge. Can I to ask one. you something? Well, or you depends on your question. <laughs> you will keep talking. Um, uh, <laughs> on, the, on this spreadsheet, we have a lot of information. Yes. Uh, how we can see minimums, maximums of velocity, for example, of a, or a speed and an average of okay. the speed that we have here. So, okay, so because Houdini saves velocity, well, the PopNet saves velocity, uh, it saves it as a vector, and then the length of the vector is obviously the speed. Um, and Houdini wants to save amount of data by default, it just saves the vector. So what we can do is we can just add an attribute wrangle and we just say f at speed equals length v at v and that gives us the speed. <coughs> and to get the minimum you can just swap between minimum and maximum, basically sort sort the attributes okay. um, and <coughs> you, what you can also do is you can promote the attribute from points to detail so it's gonna take all of them and just save one out and then in the settings of the promote uh, attribute um, you just set it's detail detail you choose the attribute and then you can say do you want the minimum so the minimum is 0.51, or you want the maximum, or you want the average, or whatever you want. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Another question, when we are dealing with a lot of data, this is checking into all the particles. There is a way to limit this to only 100 particles. So Houdini is not checking, let's say that... It's, it's really fast yeah. with the geometry spreadsheet. doesn't matter if you have 50 no. million... <coughs> it's, it's very, very fast. Because it knows all about geometry, it already loaded it to process the data, right? Okay. So um, it's really fast. If you want to... Set, like, this is basically all your geometry. And um, like you have point numbers here. So those are like, you know, point one, two, three, so and so on. So it's like vertices. Mm -hmm. It's actually the array of your geometry. Um, so if you want it to just display certain amounts so you don't get confused, you can, you know, you can either um, say uh, only show selected and then you go here and you only select a few, come on. There you go. So it only shows you the selected oh, ones. Cool. Or if you do not only show selected, you see it, it just tells you the yellow ones are the selected ones. Or you can create a group and so on. Can I display, for example, this speed value on each particle? Like in the viewport? Yes. Yeah, so that would be the next thing that oh, I okay. want to show. Is that you can, you can create a custom uh, data display. So we can either set it here. Um, you can take uh, either color or a marker. There's for volume, there's for objects. You can show constraints and rigging envelopes, like skinning. <coughs> um, I usually use the marker. So here we can show, OK, we want the speed. And there you go, you get the speed. That's cool. We can visualize these based on color. And this, let's say, the bigger speed will be like red and... Yeah, so we can add here a color and we just say attribute ramped attribute mm -hmm. and then we take speed. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if we can 
change the color of the display, but we okay. can change the color of the, the particles. Dot. So um, let's just make this a little bigger. So the particles are a little bigger. So you can already see it like. Okay. Um, and yeah. I think it 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 when you use the uh, out, uh, automatic um, range, it just takes the, the minimum, minimum, the minimum, maximum, 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 maximum yeah. and we can turn this guy off, so mm -hmm. there you go. But you can also set... Um, ah, minimum, yeah. yeah. Because sometimes you, you don't want that automatically do the average. Yeah, I don't think it did the minimum and maximum, because there were no really red particles and really mm -hmm. blue particles. That's true. Yeah, and they're all kind of purple. So... Okay. Yeah, so you can do this. Um, and the cool thing is you can also do vectors so if we go here and instead of number we just take velocity and we want to use like a vector uh, we can do the vector um, we can also what I think is really cool is if we take this box um, We can we can draw lines in the viewport to a certain position or whatever we want. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get the closest point <coughs> of each particle, the closest point um, to the surface of our box. So we're getting the box here from input two, and we're getting the position, and that gives us the closest point. And then on the closest point, we want the primitive. And from the same geometry, and we want the position. So what we're going to do is we're just going to save this as a new attribute. We we'll call this box pause. And now I can go here. So I can first. Uh, template the box and I can go here and say <coughs> point trim so now so every particle shows the position um, the closest position to on the box that's cool yeah so we can we can give it any position I just chose this um, yeah and then those are global um, settings you can add as many as you want you can even save that with Houdini um, and then the only other thing that you can also do, or it's not the only thing, but another cool thing that you can do is you can customize your visualization. So you can just um, choose this and uh, cho use this node, and it's basically the same node as the uh, same functions as this guy. As a node. Yeah, as a node. So you can have one here where you just call show speed speed <coughs> did we lose ah so we want this as marker text we don't have speed anymore it's again because you did the uh, promotion on the speed ah very good very good ah, i'm learning coding with you Goran. yeah Checking the tutorials and effective to this, you can learn from <laughs> many. Uh, yes. So the question is, why do we see it two times? That's. Well, don't know. But anyways, so part. you can you can do any. Um, you can <coughs> you can have multiple at once, and then you just switch whatever you want. Um, this can be color, so there you go. So you can just switch between them if you want multiple at once, or you have a bigger tree. Cool, and so on. Yeah, yeah so a lot this of options. is yeah, it's uh, it's really helpful whenever you get stuck and you're not sure what's going on with your data, and you know don't, things don't work out. You can just easily visualize it and. That's when it, you're like, oh, I forgot this. Or so, mm -hmm. so um, yeah, let's see how Max 
um, can handle hold, this. Yeah, holds up yeah. to this this user friendly option. I think that we can we have some stuff too. Yeah, but I'm I'm, I'm suspicious. But well, let's see it. Show me the magic. Show you the money. 